Imagine this, your dream city, Miami's neon beaches, Phoenix's endless golden hour, Barcelona's sun-drenched plazas, erased not by war or disaster, but by AI's unblinking verdict. What if I told you AI already knows which cities will win and which will lose? The 21st century? This isn't hype, not Hollywood. It's supercomputers devouring billions of data points, sea level rise, temperature shifts, economic growth, housing trends, and migration patterns. And here's the twist. Some of the world's most iconic cities, New York, Athens, London, are teetering on collapse. Meanwhile, forgotten underdogs like Buffalo and Stockholm are poised to dominate. This isn't fear-mongering. It's raw, AI-crunched reality from No AA, the IPCC, and leading urban futurists. So here's the million-dollar question. Is your hometown holding a golden ticket to the future? Or sitting on a ticking time bomb? Today, we're zooming in on the US and Europe, the epicenters of wealth and innovation, to reveal which cities will sink, which will surge, and why. Buckle up, this is GeoMap Unveiled, and the map of the future is already hitting update. Subscribe for more AI-powered truths before it's too late. Let's start in the US Sunbelt. Phoenix, Las Vegas, Austin, Dallas. Once the poster children of American growth, these cities promised affordable homes, booming tech campuses, and endless sunshine. For decades, they were marketed as paradise. But paradise has a problem. That sunshine, it's about to become brutal. According to Noe, by 2050, Phoenix could experience over 100 days a year above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not just hot, it's life-altering. Imagine four straight months where stepping outside feels like opening an oven door. And heat is only half the story. Water, the foundation of civilization, is running out. The Colorado River, lifeline for 40 million people, is in crisis, according to the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. Lake Mead and Lake Powell have hit record lows, and without drastic action, parts of the river could stop flowing altogether. Phoenix isn't alone. Austin and San Antonio, two tech-friendly stars, are now staring down a chronic drought. Rivers are shrinking. Aquifers are stressed. The cost of securing water skyrocketing. Here's the irony. These cities were once the affordable alternatives to expensive coasts. Now they might become experiments in heat economics, where survival costs, cooling systems, water imports, and infrastructure repairs start outweighing the benefits of living there. And yet, people keep moving in. Phoenix alone added nearly 17,000 new residents last year, according to U.S. Census Bureau estimates. Bold move. But here's the question. When the taps run dry and the heat won't quit, is that still growth? Or just a glittering mirage waiting to disappear? Next stop, the coasts. Miami, New York, Boston. Miami, glamorous fast-growing and slowly drowning. This is a city literally built on porous limestone and sand, and the tide is coming for it. No AA projects up to two feet of sea level rise by 2050. Two feet doesn't sound like much until you realize it means sunny day flooding in neighborhoods that never flooded before. Add in king tides, and entire streets could turn into canals. Then comes the insurance nightmare. Major insurers have already started pulling out of parts of Florida. Why? Because they see the math. One strong storm surge could bankrupt entire zip codes. Homeowners who once bragged about waterfront views are now paying premiums that rival their mortgages. Or worse, they can't get coverage at all. And when insurance vanishes, so do buyers. That means collapsing property values, underwater mortgages in more ways than one, and local economies in freefall. New York, the financial capital of the world, isn't immune. The city is spending billions on seawalls and storm barriers, but even Wall Street can't buy time. Its 100-year-old subway system wasn't built for tropical downpours, let alone hurricanes fueled by warmer oceans. Flood maps are expanding, and millions of residents are moving deeper into the danger zone every year. 
And then there's Boston, a city steeped in history. That history now faces creeping floods. By mid-century, storm surges could push water into neighborhoods like Back Bay and the Financial District. Imagine Fenway Park with a waterfront view, not because of development, but because the Atlantic decided to expand its real estate portfolio. Here's the bottom line. These cities have wealth, power, and influence. They can delay the ocean, but they can't defeat it. Every seawall, every pump, every storm barrier comes with a billion dollar price tag. Question for you, would you bet your home, your life savings on a city the ocean is already claiming inch by inch? Now here's a twist. What if Detroit, Buffalo, and Pittsburgh, the so-called Rust Belt, are the comeback kids of 2050? Welcome to the Great Lakes Climate Belt, a region blessed with what the Sun Belt and coastal cities are rapidly losing. Water, moderate weather, and space to grow. Researchers from the Urban Climate Futures Project predict this corridor could attract millions of climate migrants in the next 30 years. According to the Mayor's Migration Council, Buffalo offers cool summers and access to abundant fresh water from the Great Lakes. It's already seeing housing demand tick up as climate-aware buyers look for long-term stability. Detroit, once a symbol of industrial decline, has cheap land, vast infrastructure, and an auto industry reinventing itself around electric vehicles and battery tech. And Pittsburgh? It's already a hub for healthcare, robotics, and AI research, with major universities fueling a skilled workforce. Call it a Rust Belt Renaissance, or just smart geography. While other regions scramble for water or seawalls, these cities are sitting on climate resilience. By mid-century, the places America left behind may be the ones holding the future. Let's jump to Europe, Spain, Italy, and Greece. Today, they're the crown jewels of tourism, drawing millions for sun-soaked holidays. But by 2050, they could feel more like pressure cookers than paradises. The IPCC project's parts of Southern Europe may face average summer temperatures above 45 degrees Celsius, 113 degrees Fahrenheit, by mid-century. That's not vacation weather. It's a crisis. Crops wither under relentless heat, triggering agricultural collapse. Water resources? Stretched to the breaking point. Cities like Barcelona and Athens already face restrictions in dry years. Imagine that as the norm. And when the grid strains under millions of air conditioners, blackouts become part of daily life. Productivity plummets as labor shifts indoors or stops altogether. The result? GDPs take a hit, and migration flows accelerate northward. The Mediterranean dream may not vanish completely, but it will come at a staggering cost. Now look north. Berlin, Stockholm, Glasgow, Copenhagen, once seen as gray, chilly, and a little too quiet. By 2050, these cities could be the climate champions of Europe. While Southern Europe bakes, the North is doubling down on resilience. Berlin is investing heavily in urban cooling systems, green rooftops, and water retention projects to handle extreme weather. Stockholm? It plans to go fossil fuel free by 2040, making it one of the greenest capitals on Earth. Copenhagen continues to lead in cycling infrastructure and renewable energy, while Glasgow is using its open land and tax incentives to attract green tech startups and clean energy firms. According to the European Environment Agency, internal migration is already shifting northward, and these cities are ready to catch the wave. They're not just trying to survive the climate crunch. They're building economies designed to thrive in it. For Northern Europe, the future isn't about adaptation. It's about leadership. Boring? Try brilliant. These cities are turning drizzle into destiny. And if you're dreaming of relocation in 2050, you might want to start your search here first. Real estate developers, insurance companies, even the military, they're not waiting for 2050. They're watching the trends and moving money now. Investors are quietly betting on inland cities like Buffalo, Minneapolis, and Berlin. Why? 
These regions promise water security, manageable temperatures, and lower climate risk. Entire portfolios are being rebalanced, and land that once seemed undesirable is suddenly in high demand. Developers are buying up parcels near major rivers and lakes, not for views, but for survival. Meanwhile, property values in flood-prone zones are already under pressure. In Florida, some insurers have stopped writing new policies altogether, forcing homeowners into state-backed programs with skyrocketing rates. Coastal Spain is seeing similar patterns, with premiums soaring as heat and flooding risks rise. Banks are following suit, adjusting mortgage terms based on climate risk scores, and in some cases, refusing long-term loans in high-risk areas. And AI is feeding this entire shift, crunching terabytes of data on infrastructure stress, migration flows, and disaster probabilities to tell investors where the safe bets lie. This isn't just a housing market trend. It's a geographic reordering of wealth and population playing out in real time. Think SimCity, but with real money, real homes, and real consequences. The smart money's already voting with dollars. The million dollar question is, is yours. So, what do we do with all this? If you live in a high-risk zone, it doesn't mean pack your bags tomorrow, but it does mean your city needs to adapt, and fast. Because places that fail to prepare will lose more than property values. They'll lose people, investment, and momentum. Adaptation isn't optional anymore. It's survival. That means seawalls where they make sense, smarter water management and infrastructure designed for extremes, not for the climate of 1950. The question is, which cities will actually make those investments? And which will gamble, hoping the storm skips them? Now flip the map. If you're in a so-called sleeper city, a place with steady weather, reliable water, and a solid power grid, you might be sitting on a gold mine. In 2050, that might matter more than ocean views or endless sunshine. Here's the bigger picture. AI isn't flashing these red flags for drama. It's a blueprint, showing us exactly where we're headed if we ignore the data and where we could go if we act now. The map is being redrawn, not by politicians or developers, but by heat, water, and human choices. So humanity's at a crossroads, gamble and hope, or gear up and lead. The million dollar question is, will your city be the next climate casualty or the next great safe haven? Stay informed, stay ahead. The future is already arriving. You just have to decide how you meet it. Shocked, inspired? Drop your city's 2050 prediction in the comments. Will it rise or vanish? Like if this hit home, Subscribe for more AI-powered insights and fascinating geography facts, and share with friends in danger zones. Let's rewrite the future together.